Okay, Tammy Wolf, you should know. Okay, Tammy, uh, first question. Tell me about growing up in New Jersey. What part of Jersey are you from? And how does um, Jersey compare to D.C.? Uh, I am from down the shore in New Jersey. I can see it in your face. It's not like that. I don't know Snooky. <laughs> Uh, but I did grow up in a small town called Oceanport, uh, about 10 minutes from the beach. Uh, which is, so DC is certainly more exciting, uh, quality of life, or I don't know about quality of life, but life-wise, uh, DC is much more exciting. There's many, many more things to do, uh, but it does not have that same access to the beach. So, uh, it's, it's a tough call sometimes, but I, I'm very glad I came back to D.C. and I'm living here. Okay, great. And how you attended uh, American University mm -hmm. and you were involved in the Hillel there. How was it attending AU and what was it like being in, involved in the Hillel? Yeah, so I, one of the reasons I came to American was to experience life outside of suburban New Jersey. And I definitely did. It's actually, I, I grew up going to synagogue and sort of involved with my uh, with my temple, not really with the youth group or anything. So it was really in college. Uh, I remember I went to some of the uh, Hillel Welcome Week events my freshman year, and that really started my journey probably into an adult Jewish life. Uh, they sunk their little claws into me, and uh, I haven't looked back since. I made some of my best friends through AU Hillel uh, during undergrad. And um, you, you studied, you majored in American history, I believe, I did. or history. How did you become interested in American history? Uh, I've always liked history. I, I can't pinpoint a like how or why or anything like that. I just think the way people interact with each other is fascinating. So I wound up thinking I was going to go to law school and that history would be a good major. And then I wound up not going to law school. Uh, so I wound up getting, uh, I stayed on and got my master's in American history and this field called public history, which is basically anything not in a classroom. Uh, so I, I was actually originally planning on working in museums and doing museum education and public programming. Okay, great. And then tell me about participating in the uh, Mas Massa Israel program. Yeah. Uh, you know, you lived in Net Netanya for for ten months. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? So, huh, it's actually after grad school I had moved back home, which is how I know I prefer to live in D.C. And I was there for about a year when uh, looking for a job. Uh, when my friend said, "Masa has this great new program. You should do it." And Masa is an organization, uh, part of the Jewish Aid Agency that provide that runs our um, programs for Jewish young adults 18 to 30 to live in Israel for a long period of time, um, about five to ten months for Americans. Uh, and I had always wanted, I had gone on birthright in college and I had actually gone back to Israel with my family in grad school and I, spending a significant amount of time in Israel was on my to-do list. And this opportunity came around. I did a program called Israel Teaching Fellows where I lived and worked in Netanya from September through June of 2011-2012 and it was just the most there's no words really for for the Masak, for my at least for my Masak experience I made some of my best friends I it's it's one thing to visit a place uh, and it's another thing to really get the chance to live there and become a part of the community and and know, uh, for me especially, the kids in school and about their lives and their families. And it was, it was unbelievable. Um, they took us all around the country and it was, you really got to know Israel, um, flaws and all, as opposed to birthright, which is fantastic and wonderful, but such a quick experience uh, and it I'll be honest I almost stayed uh, it, was, it was a very powerful experience and if anyone is 18 to 30 and would like to learn more about Massa they should and spend some time in Israel um, do it just do it just go now you, you did go back to Israel and you studied at uh, yeshiva 
in Jerusalem yeah. in so 2012. Was Tell me a little about yeah, that. Yeah, so it was actually, uh, I didn't go back. I just kind of stayed an extra seven weeks, okay. seven or eight weeks. Um, my program ended at the end of June, and I wasn't quite ready to go back, and I was thinking about staying for another year. And the conservative yeshiva in Jerusalem offered me uh, a scholarship to stay uh, and study for the summer, and so I did. And that was a really great, I love learning and how it, whatever my feelings are about kind of what Tara says and what Talmud says, I, I just want to know it. Uh, so that was my first time studying Talmud and it was, it was a lot of fun to live in Jerusalem and uh, to just be in an environment where people were learning because they wanted to. And I'm a nerd, so that what I love and it was actually it was really eye-opening to 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 go directly to the source and to decipher it for myself uh, it was again a powerful experience that I really loved and tell me about your current position here at the DCJCC as the director of entry point DC yes yeah, so actually while I was at yeshiva uh, I was looking at kind of what am I going to do next year, it was the, the summer of 2012, and this I was looking through all the jobs, and I had, since I had been in Israel, I had started looking at jobs in the Jewish community as well, and this one came up, and I applied, and now here I am, almost three years later. Um, I, I, I love what I get to do, so Entry Point DC is the DCJCC's programming for young professionals. So I do about two to four programs a month, social, cultural, educational, um, as long as it looks cool and Jewish, I'm all over it. Um, and so I get, so uh, we just had a huge program for Shavuot where we studied and ate cheesecake and ice cream sundaes because that's what you do. We had a happy hour last night. We have a community service project coming up. We have a Shabbat dinner and a show with the, with the JCC's theater company, Theater J. So a really kind of wide variety of, of things. Um, I get to meet people and say, you want to be Jewish and you want to do Jewish things and I want to help you do that. And how can I do that? How can I utilize the, source, the resources of the JCC or our film department and our literary department, our music department, our uh, LGBT program, GLOW? Uh, how can I, what can I use from here to bring you in and how can I connect you to other awesome Jewish things going on in the city? And there are a lot of those. And um, well, let's 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 segue into that. Yeah. What is your favorite part or parts of the DC Jewish community? What else do you like to do besides you know your work here at the yeah. Entry Point DC? So I think my whole life is the Jewish community. Uh, in addition to working here at the J, I volunteer with the Jewish Historical Society of Greater Washington uh, because I missed working in museums. So I lead school tours for them, or usually school tours. Um, it's usually uh, Hebrew school classes from this area or maybe from even outside of this area and I kind of introduce them to the historical Jewish community in DC um, and I also sit on the membership and programming committee for them which I which is my first time sitting on any sort of committee or board for an organization so it's really exciting to see uh, how that works as a member rather than uh, what I see here, which is from the staff side. Um, we, this area doesn't have, I think, the stereotypical Jewish American history that we think of, you know, we think of New York, for example. Um, and DC didn't have an equivalent of a Lower East Side uh, in, the, in the 19th century when the community was really starting, mid 19th century when the community was really starting, and how does that affect, it was, it's how does that affect everything and how does that change the way uh, DC's Jewish community interacts with the larger DC community um, and so that's really fun and I get to help with programs over there and put things together uh, I hope I'm helping them reach out to a younger audience um, fingers crossed because that's what I want to be doing with them and, and then oh, sorry, yeah and so I also I'm one of the founding members and the outgoing co-chair of the Massa Alumni DC Massa Alumni Board, which um, 
connects Masa alumni to each other. Uh, we kind of recruit for Masa because we had such a fabulous experience and of course we want everyone else to have such a wonderful experience. Uh, and, um, and I've had the opportunity with them to do a lot of things on a more national scale, uh, retreats and conferences. Uh, and it's it's a great way to stay connected for me to to Israel and to this wonderful community of people who know what it's there's something really special about living in Israel and that's hard to put into words and when you know that you're with someone else who did it it's there's not as much you have to to struggle to say so i it's it's important and i really enjoy it and what what do you love about DC what do you what do you really enjoy about living here everything but the rent. <laughs> um, it's just such an exciting city. There's, I am coming up on my 11th anniversary of first moving to DC and it's so not the place it was in 2004 when I got here. So for me it's been really exciting to to watch that change. Um, I remember I would never have come to 14th Street and now I'm on 14th Street all the time. Um, but we have such a, an amazing culture here. Um, it's like there's something going on all the time. There's an amazing theater scene, um, cultural events, mu the museums, great spaces to just hang out in. Uh, I'm in Meridian Hill Park now that it's getting nice out, or it was, uh, all the time. And, and there's really great restaurants too, which I love. I love. So there, it's all the, the ease and convenience of a big city, but you look around and there's still trees everywhere. Uh, and it's, you can get everywhere. It's not a pain, it's, there's very few places that it's really a pain to get to. Uh, and I love the, the kind of life that I get to live and watching the intersection of national life and local life also is, is fascinating how how those two are balanced and I feel like working where I do and, and not being a part of that gives me an interesting perspective on it sometimes because I'm not in the middle of it I'm here and it's happening to me and around me but not 